Good morning, everyone. This is Karen Hooley, and welcome to this week's live stream with um, Team Hooligan. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I'm losing my voice again today. Um, I'm so glad you guys are all here. I'll be checking in with the chat room here in a minute. But um, for those of you who are watching for the first time, I just wanted to let you know that you can find out everything there is to know about me and Karen Hooley Designs by going to my website, the link's down here, karenhooley.com, no spaces or dashes or periods or anything in my name. Make sure you check that out. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe to my newsletter. My newsletter is um, the place where <clears throat> you will get uh, deepest discounts on new releases. In fact, I'll be talking about a new release that's coming next week. You'll get 25% off that. Um, so be, make sure you subscribe now so that you can get the... Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. I'm sorry. Let me take a sip of my coffee here. Excuse me. Make sure you subscribe um, today so that you will be in the queue to get the discount when the pattern drops next week. Um, while you, um, If you want to have a direct link to my newsletter, go ahead and use this link, karenhooley.com slash subscribe, and that'll take you right to the newsletter subscription. You'll also get a free pattern when you subscribe. So make sure you take advantage of that as well. Um, if you're not watching on YouTube, um, right now I am live, so you're probably watching on YouTube. But if you're not, if you're watching after the fact, um, make sure you ch <clears throat> check out my YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the thumbs up and you hit the subscribe button. Both of those will help me with the algorithm and be seen by more crocheters out there. And I'd really like to see our little group here grow as the year progresses. So make sure you do that for me. I really appreciate it. If you're not watching on YouTube, you're either watching on my blog, which is on my website, or you're watching on Rumble. And Rumble is um, another video streaming platform that I use. I am not live streaming quite yet to Rumble, um, but I do upload these live streams every week as soon as I'm done with the live stream. So this is my Rumble channel. Make sure you check that out. Um, that Rumble channel is growing faster than my YouTube channel. So if you haven't checked out Rumble, you might want to check it out. Um, I'm hoping in the next couple of months or so, I'll be adding more videos beside my live streams there. So be watching for that as well. And last but not least, the place I am most active right now is on Instagram. So make sure you check out Karen Hooley, at Karen Hooley. No spaces in my name. So check me out on Instagram as well. So I'm going to head over to the chat room here really quick because I see you guys have been chatting a little. Linda and Daisy May are here. Yay. And you, she smashed that button, um, that um, thumbs up button. So thank you so much for doing that. And Joyce is here while she's uh, while she's working. I'm glad you, you were able to pop in, Joyce. And I hope you enjoy our videos today. Um, and Laura's here. Good morning. Happy Wednesday to you as well. I'm glad you're here. Teresa's here. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, and Dawn is here. And Renee is here. Good morning, everybody. And Stephanie is here. Good morning. So I hope you guys are all having a great week. Um, <clears throat> before I get into my usual stuff, um, I just want to tell you because I did had mentioned it <clears throat> last week, I think. I don't know what's going on with my voice today, guys. Sorry. Um, but uh, I mentioned to you guys, I believe it was last week, that I am. Um, I had an appointment yesterday with my, uh, my urologist about my bladder cancer and found out I am still tumor free. So I will be starting um, my next round of maintenance treatments um, in February. Uh, I think February 10th is the first one. I do three. Uh, treatments, one a week for three weeks. So just so you guys know that I'm um, starting that, um, I guess the the Zoom call or the, the live chat the week after, I'm going to be a little pale, more pale than I already am <laughs> and a little tired looking and stuff and brain fog. But I just want to let you guys know that we're still cancer free. So that's an amazing thing. So I am so glad. I don't know. It's it's weird. It's like right before I go in for those appointments, <clears throat> I um I start to panic. It's and I was really, really worried this time. I I mean I said that last time too, but this time I don't know. It was really weird. It was like this whole weight lifted off of me yesterday. So I got a lot done after that appointment. 
but I'm so glad to say that I am still tumor free. So I only have this treatment, this round of treatments. And then in April, I go back for another check. And if I'm clear there, I have one more round of treatments. And then after that round of treatments, I get checked one more time. And if everything is still cancer free, that, that next check after the next round, I won't have to do treatments anymore, guys. So if you pray, please keep me in your prayers that we keep going with that. So I'm really, I'm really thrilled. Um, I see you guys up. Yay. Good news. It is really good news, Stephanie. Thanks. And <laughs> Laura, yay. Thank you for the hugs. I could use the hugs. I feel like I haven't gotten hugs from anybody but my immediate family in a long time. And Teresa, yeah, it's really great news. It is really, really great news. Thanks um, both Teresa and Renee. That's, yeah, it's, yeah, a weight is lifted. So um, until April. <laughs> so I have a feeling I'll panic again in April, but we'll see. Um, anyway, um, let's get started with some of the things I want to talk about. So I'm going to um, first show you, I have a, um, I finally have something new in the studio to show you that came in yesterday, actually. Um, I'm so excited. I got some new yarn. I actually got two hanks from the fiber seed. This is her um, uh, sprout sock, which is a fingering weight. Um, this is her January colorway. So she does a colorway every month. And this is her January 2022 colorway called Aurora Borealis. I'm going to put the link up here for you for that. So um, this is her Aurora Borealis. Um, she does have it on the site. Um, it right now showing out of stock. This colorway was so popular that she had to take pre-orders and then she had to take the pre-orders down so she could dye the pre-orders. And then I believe on the 28th, it's going to come back up. So, but I would definitely check it out if you're a blue green kind of person. This is just absolutely gorgeous. That's not even giving you the true color of it. I mean, it's just this gorgeous tealy blue green. It's just absolutely fantastic. And you know me, I can't anything with blues in it. I cannot, I cannot say no to. So, um, and this one was just especially, I love the fiber seed anyway. So um, <clears throat> this was a no brainer when I saw this colorway, I had to get a couple of hanks of it. I don't know what it's going to be yet. It's going to sit on my shelf for a little bit, but I absolutely love this color. Um, oh, I got some, uh, some more comments in here. Okay. So Teresa, thank you, Teresa, for sending me the prayers. I, I really appreciate it. And Linda says, perfect news. Keep rattling those beads. Please do keep rattling those beads. And Laura says, gorgeous blues. Oh my gosh. I love the fiber seed is probably um, my second favorite dyer. I mean, well, she and Smutzarelli yarns are probably my two most absolute favorite yarns that um, I get, I work with. Um, uh, Lindsay at, at the fiber seed has been amazing with, um, I'll be talking about her again in a little bit, but it's um, just gorgeous yarn. I mean, her yarns and all of them, I have this, I have, let me see, I've got some other colorway spurs in here. Um, oh, I have this one. This is for my son. He wants fingerless mitts and that. Um, I have, oh, this one. This one I absolutely love too. This is Blue Orchid. That's from her as well. Isn't this gorgeous? I mean, she just dyes beautiful yarn. So, um, and Linda says, oops. She loves anything fiber seed, bought some of their Christmas sock yarn. Yeah, her sock yarns are great. I have not used any of her other bases, but um, her sock, is, I love her sock. I'm trying to think if I have, I think that's it I have on the shelf right now. Oh no, I take that back. This is her Delta Dawn. Um, this was a color of the month. Last year or the year before, I can't remember. It was in the spring. Um, it might've been last year, but I love this color too. So that's something for me. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it yet, but I want to do something for me in that. So anyway, um, Laura says lots and lots and lots of stars. 
Yeah, it's, it's she's got gorgeous yarn. So if you haven't um, tried her yarn, I would definitely order a hank and play with it. It's it's amazing. So that's what's new in the studio. I haven't gotten anything else that's new, but the yarn, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but it's there. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is, let me see, hang on. Oh, this is new. I just found this out yesterday. I'm going to share my screen with you. So hang on a second. Um, ha. Do you remember the, the, um, Lamb Shop Knits had my, um, what do you call it? My, uh, Queen of Hearts shawl. She had done kits and she still does have some kits available on her website. In fact, I'll bring the, I'll bring that up after, but, um, she also now has kits for my tilt sock pattern. Um, that's the link to the website. It'll also be in the show notes after the live stream, but I'm going to take that off for a second because it covers a lot of the screen, but she has, um, the pattern and she's using two different types of yarn. She's either using Jaeger, Mal um, Jaeger sock yarn or Madeline Tosh sock. Um, but here's the Tosh colors for those socks. Aren't those gorgeous? The Madeline Tosh they're just gorgeous. I love that Central Park West and I love that Star Scatter. It's beautiful colorways. And then these are her Jaeger um, colorways. She's got um, tonals in that one. Or actually they look, well, they are tonals, but they also kind of look um, a little tweedy too, looking at it now. Um, so if you are interested in getting a kit for my sock pattern, um, check out Lamb Shop Knits. I'll put the link back up here in a minute. Um, but there's a short version and then there's a longer version. Um, so if you're interested in the, in uh, doing those socks, they're toe-up socks. So you start at the toe and work up to the cuff. Um, you can get them at, get it at Lamb Shop Knits. And then I'm also going to show you her kits for my queen of hearts. So if you're interested in getting the pattern in with yarn, you can get them from her. She no longer has the, um, the discount code for me. So otherwise I'd give you the discount code, but these are the colors you can do queen of hearts in. So she's got, these are the, she's got them in just three colors. I use mini skeins and she just did, uh, she did a, um, just three full size hanks or four full size hanks for each kit. Um, but if you haven't seen Queen of Hearts, that's Queen of Hearts right there. So um, those are definitely um, two places to come, uh, two different kits that if you'd like to, to try, definitely do that. I'm trying to get my screen organized here again. Um, let me put her link back up here really quick. Yeah. So for the socks, um, that's the link. Um, if, and if you just scroll down on the socks, um, you'll see my Queen of Hearts kits. She did say that once the Queen of Hearts kits are gone, they're gone forever. So if you're interested in any of those colors, um, make sure you check those out. Um, but she's got some great, some great yarns. She and her husband are starting their own um, yarn dyeing business. I think in March or April, they're going to launch their their own yarns and they're going to be using their own yarns for the kits. And, um, I had just talked to her yesterday and she's going to, um, she and I are going to get in touch in the fall and I will see about doing another kit for her. So just so you guys know, um, okay. So, uh, let's see, Teresa said, I'm going to check out her shop on my lunch break. I'm not sure whose shop, if that was fiber seed or if that was, Lamb Shop Knits, but both of them have shops, so check both of those out. Linda says, you got the colorway in purple. Yes, the, the Queen of Hearts in purple. I remember you getting that. That's great. Yep, I remember Queen of Hearts. <laughs> so, okay, so I wanted to make sure that you guys saw that, um, that she's doing that now. So she has a sock kit. I know a lot of you have been asking for sock, a sock class, and that is coming. Um, I'm still working on when and how, but... Um, I will be doing another sock class, so don't worry about that. Um, okay, so that's on my list. Okay, so let me show you my projects in progress. Um, 
So I think I mentioned last time, I get a, I've got a pile over here. So um, I've shown you this yarn before and I showed you that I'm working on knit socks. This is my travel project and I've been posting it on Instagram. Um, each time I go to the doctor's office and I'm waiting in the waiting room and this it, with four different doctor's appointments over the last, what, since last Monday, this is as far as I've gone. <laughs> so I'm not waiting very long these days. Um, I have another doctor's appointment on um, Friday. So Friday, if Mon Wednesday, uh, January is when I get all the doctor's appointments. I mean, it's like everything is scheduled in January. The good, all the good stuff. I mean, just the, the physicals and the, the checkups with all my specialists and things like that. Nothing serious. So um, other than the cancer about yesterday, but um, I'm still working on this. I haven't even got past the, the, the leg of it yet. I still got another, let's see, one, two, three, four. Um, I still need another five stripes before I can even figure out where the heel's going to go. So there you go. <laughs> so that's a, a, a yarn that's no longer available for anybody who's asking. Um, I, I just saw comments pop up here. Um, uh, this yarn is round table yarns. She stopped dying about two years ago. Um, and it's the last skein I have of her yarn on my shelf. Well, actually, I have one that's wound that's a solid color that I haven't decided what to do with it yet. But this is the last of her self-striping. And I'm looking for a dyer who does really good self-striping like she does. So if you guys know of anybody, I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Stephanie says, oh, one of these days I'll get to making Queen of Hearts. I have the red kit. Yarn is wound. Just haven't had time. I know. We all get busy. But when, when you start, make sure you show me... You got started, so I'd really love to see that. And then Linda says, on your pattern club, club, I thought I got the right weight of yarn, but it was worse that I bought fingering, weight malabrigo, and ivory green. Oh, good. Good, good, good. I'm glad you got some yarn that you'd like for it. I can't wait to see it. So make sure you post in the in the group. And um, for those of you who are part of the pattern club, um, please go in there and chat. I mean, don't just post when you've got something to show. I mean, chat with each other. It's, it's more than just the pattern. I mean, if you'd like to talk about other things, you can. So make sure you go in there. And this the same is true with the crochet along, which I'm going to show you in a minute there too. So make sure you guys do that. Um, okay. So I showed you the sock. Oh, my sweater. Remember last week I showed you my sweater and I had that ruffled bottom. Well, right after I had, after I um, was, I got off the Zoom call with you guys or the, the lives, um, live chat with you guys, um, I got on Zoom for my class and it was a class with Edie Ekman. I don't know how many of you guys know who Edie Ekman is, but she's a knitter and a crochet and a designer. And she was doing a class um, last week on uh, sizing basics with just getting the numbers right for sweaters and things like that. And I, it's a class I've been wanting to take for a long time. In fact, I signed up for it last year and then I found out I had cancer and couldn't take it. So finally, um, I was able to take it. And um, while I was waiting in the waiting room, I started un undoing that, that sweater and she said, she, she popped in and saw me and she's like, what are you doing? And so I showed her and she says, don't rip it out. She says, cut out the cast on. So that's what I did. I put a lifeline in. So I hadn't ripped out that much. So I put a lifeline in. I don't know if you guys can see it right here, right above the cast on. And then I literally picked out, I had to pick it out. It took a long time to pick it out, but I picked out the the cast on. And then when I'm done with the sweater, I will find a bind off that I like that looks similar to what the original cast on was. And I'll bind off these live stitches at the bottom. So I was able to get more of my sweater done. And that took a while. That took me a whole evening to, to put the lifeline in and then pick it out. So I haven't been able to knit on it as much as I thought I was going to. But I wanted to show you that I saved all that color work that I did. So I was really excited about that. Um, <clears throat> uh, Linda, I just sent you an email about the Zoom replay, so don't worry about that. I just sent it this morning, um, so you'll have all the details on that. Um, 
And you love Edie Ekman. I love her too. She's one of my, one of, a, a really good friend and uh, colleague in the industry. So anyway, she saved me and saved my color work. So I'm really happy about that. Um, okay, so I'm showing you the sweater. So the sweater's coming along. I probably have another five or six inches before I can start working the armholes. So I'm working from the bottom up. So I just need to um, have some time to just knit on that for a while. Okay, what else is new? Um, oh, okay, so finally, finally, I have started actually working on my first project for... Um, It'll, this will be a pattern for 2023. So guys, I'm sorry, but this is a pattern I printed off the internet probably for, um, oh gosh, maybe like five or six, seven years ago. And I never played with it. And um, when I started thinking about what I wanted to do for 2023, I knew I wanted to use this pattern. So I pulled it out and I swatched it. And it's a honeycomb pattern, as you guys can see. I'm going to put it a little closer. This is done in worsted weight, um, Cascade 220, just because I wanted to see how it worked first. So I've actually started working on the first pattern. So you're going to get a little sneak peek, but this is all you're going to get to see. Oh, I just lost the stitch. Hang on. Ah, hang on. I got to pull a loop bigger. So this is the first part. Oops, I'm going to turn it this way so you can see. This is a DK weight yarn from Emma's Yarn. Um, it's the colorway Kale. And um, I'm not going to tell you what it's going to be, but um, it started, it's turning out exactly the way I wanted it to. So this is something that after I finish the design, I'm actually going to film a video of how to do this stitch. And when the pattern launches next year, I will also launch it with the video. So um, I'm, what I'm trying to do this year is as I create new patterns is do the video right away before I move on to the next pattern so that I can, if there's anything I need to teach, um, it's already there and I can just play a video if we do a Zoom call or, or whatever. So um, that's something you guys, um, can do. Uh, Edie might be a good guest for your pattern club. Okay. Yes, she would be, but um, I'm not using any of her stuff for my pattern club this year. So um, the only people I'm going to be guesting for the pattern club are the dyers that I'm using. So, and unfortunately I can't get a hold of mozzarella for the first month. So um, it's, it, I'm hoping because I have another pattern coming with her yarn later in the year. I'm hoping we'll be able to connect for that one. So there you go. The new pattern and the color of the yarn. The color of the yarn is a really rich green. Um, I'm not usually a green person and I just love how it's turning out. So um, it is something that's worked in the round. The swatch was done flat and I figured out how to make it work in the round. So every pattern that I've seen using this stitch has been flat. So I have figured out a way to make it work in the round. So that's another reason why I'm doing a video. <laughs> Let's see. Teresa said, I started the first shawl from the Pattern Club. You love how it's turning out. Good. I'm so glad. I'm so, so glad. Um, make sure you get into the to chat room or into the forums and, and post your pictures for the for the pattern. Even if just, just showing me your colorway and where you're at, that kind of thing. I mean, I'd really like that to become a community. So make sure you pop in, even if it's only once a week or something, just show us where you're at, that kind of thing. So anyway, so that's probably the last time you're going to see that pattern until the pattern's released. I'm, you know, maybe I'll do a sneak peek um, once it's done and uh, before it goes to photography, because it'll probably go for, to photography in April because I'm trying to group all my patterns for next year in groups of three or four patterns. So depending on how fast I am, <laughs> we'll be, we'll be doing that. Um, I'm also going to be doing a second version in this colorway. This is this mozzarella spectacular with the sparkle in it. So I'm doing the DK weight first because I wanted to make sure I had enough yarn in the DK before I did it. And I know I have enough 
in this. So, and then the pattern will give you um, how to work it in the, in the DK as well as how to work it in the uh, fingering. So that's a cool little thing. Um, let's see. Um, okay, so got that. Um, um, for those of you who are in the crochet along um, the felted gradient bag, I just sent out a new video for you guys for our Zoom call. For some reason, Zoom will not give me the password for the link that I sent you. I have no idea where it is. I have gone to every screen. I've even talked to their customer support. They don't know why I'm not seeing a, pa a, a password. It's not something they can get for me. So I was able to download it and I have it up on my website. And those of you who are in the Pattern Club, make sure you um, check your email today because I've got it, uh, I have a link there. And this is going to be a page for all of those who are in the crochet along. Um, I'll be just to update the videos there every week. So as soon as I've got the video up, I'll send you an, e an email saying the new video is up or I also got a link to um, the Discord channel, which I started yesterday, um, and people are already joining. So make sure you join the Discord channel. It's really actually just like a um, like a a feed that you can read through, and you can respond to people and stuff like that. I've got different little areas. So if you have questions, you go to this one section. If you have want to post pictures of your project, you post in in another section. I have an announcement section. Um, I'm trying to remember what else is there. I've got, let's see, announcements, introduce yourself, post your project and questions. Um, there's a voice channel there as well. So don't worry about um, that voice. I'm not gonna use that section. Um, there, I can't delete it, but definitely um, use the, the text ones. So there's that, um, let's see. Fiber seed has beautiful Valentine. Yes, it's that's her. Yes, it's gorgeous. I, yeah, I'm, I'm trying not to order that. <laughs> I'm trying so hard not to order it because I ordered some other yarn that's being dyed for me right now. And I promised myself I wasn't going to buy that much yarn this year. And I've already bought two, two Hank groups from two different dyers. So um, the one that's being dyed for me right now, the way she does it, she does pre-orders and you order the colors you want and then she dyes them. And so I won't have them until sometime in February. Um, but that's how she does them. So I won't tell you who she is yet until I get the yarn and um, then I'll show you guys what I got. Um, but it's an, a dyer I haven't used before and I've been wanting to. So that's why I ordered it. And because she was doing a really good, a good, um, release of colors. So um, that's coming. <laughs> and I'm trying so hard not to order yarn. Um, okay, so I showed you that. I okay, so you guys, uh oh. Okay, my, re my, uh, um, so uh, my screen did something weird. So I don't know if you guys saw it, but I sure did. Um, anyway, um, you guys have been probably looking at Cactus Dreams behind me. And those of you who follow me on Instagram and are subscribed to my newsletter, you've already gotten the word that this is going to be released on Tuesday next week. Um, I thought I'd put it up here. This is also the fiber seed yarn. This is her cactus. Oh, I do have a hank of that. I forgot. I do have a, a hank left. Oh, it doesn't have a tag on it, though. Um, this is her cactus colorway. I can't remember the full name of it. I don't know if she still has it on the website. This was the color of the month last spring. So Delta Dawn must have been the, the, the spring before. Um, this is a gorgeous colorway. I think she put it in her cycle of colors, I believe. But that's what I used for this sweater. Um, she worked with me on that. I still have a hank left, and I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But... Um, it's a cropped sweater. It comes in nine sizes from extra small to 5X. Um, so pretty much, I mean, it's as inclusive as I could make it <laughs> with the yarns that I did um, as far as sizing is concerned. Um, you can make it longer if you want to. Um, all you have to do is add more rows in the front and the back before you um, 
make this the, the area for the sleeves and the neckline. That's all you've got to do. So you're just going to need a little more yarn if you want it. Um, but it's a, it got a lacy look to it with, with solid sleeves. It's made in pieces. And the way I do sweaters that are made in pieces, succulent, that's the name of it. Renee said, yes, succulent was the name of the colorway. Thank you. Um, anyway, um, I make it in pieces. Then I have you block all the pieces before you sew them together. And there's a reason for that. Um, this way you've got the length and the width of where you need it to be before you sew it. But it also makes sure that when you're sewing things together, that you don't tighten things too much. And then when you try to block it, you know, like the side seam doesn't want to stretch to the length that you were supposed to stretch it to. And that's important with lace. It's more important with all crochet or all knit even when you're blocking, um, that you block your pieces before you sew them together. I know a lot of designers out there, especially the younger ones, think you can just sew it together and then block it. And it doesn't always work. So the instructions will tell you when to block and what the sizes are and then how to seam it and, and how to do the buttonholes and sew buttons and all that stuff. So um, it's coming uh, Tuesday, the 25th of next week. And for if you're on my newsletter, you will get a 25% off coupon that's good for a week. So it ends um, the 31st. I have to have a look at my calendar there for a sec. Uh, on the 31st, the, you, is the last day you'll be able to buy it at 25% off if you're a newsletter subscriber. So um, I can't remember what the, what the original price of the pattern is. Um, I want to say it's an $8 pattern. I want to say it's, it's, a, it's a longer pattern because I, I base my pricing of my patterns on what it would cost to print them because I do have to think about wholesale for those shops that want to buy my patterns in wholesale and they want them printed. So I have to price everything by page. Um, so that's how I price them. So I'm pretty sure this is an eight page pattern. So it's, I think it's an $8 pattern. Anyway, the, you get nine sizes on it. So I'm really excited for it to finally be out in the world. Um, this is my first pattern being released other than the Pattern Club um, for 2022. The next um, non-Pattern Club pattern will be in March. So um, be watching for that. But it's, it's a great sweater. Um, I, it's not my size. I wish I would have made it in my size. Um, it used two, uh, well, one in almost, almost two hanks of the fiber seed. And this is a 36 inch bust. Um, for my size, it, I would have used um, not quite three hanks. So, and because it's cropped, it's um, it, it takes less yarn. So it's, it's great. It's really a great pattern. And it's an easy easy to memorize lace stitch. I think you guys will enjoy it if you if you decide to try it. And because it's all in, in all these sizes, um, you can find, you know, the size that's right for you. I recommend about a two inch ease on it. But you know, if you want it tighter, you can make it tighter. If you want to make it looser, you can make it looser. And um, one of the things I want to do this year is figure out a way to teach you to you guys how to customize a sweater, a crochet sweater, so because a lot of times, in fact, this is something that we talked about in Edie's class, is that a lot of times, you know, we have to design for a specific silhouette. You know, if it's a if it's a size 14, you know, not all size 14s are the same body shape or the fun same. They don't all have the same armhole depth or, you know, the neckline might need to be a little bit bigger on a on a shorter 14 because she's a little heavier, you know, that kind of thing. So um, I want to figure out a way to teach a class on how to customize a sweater. So um, that's something I'm thinking about. It's something in the, um, the back of my mind that I want to do. Um, and I'm writing notes as I come up with little, little tidbits that I want to do. Um, it's funny because I, I could be designing something like this, this honeycomb pattern that I'm doing. And I get ideas for something else. I mean, I can't tell you how many things I wrote down yesterday just working on this little thing that are not related to this. So um, it's 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 kind of odd how my brain works sometimes, um, but it is something I want to do. And I'm going to be taking more classes from Edie. Um, I'm retaking a class that she did 
several years ago because she's updated it quite a bit. And that's actually going to start in February as well. And it's on Wednesdays. So the days that I'm in that class with her, um, I am going to have to do the a little abbreviated um, Zoom or YouTube lives. So make sure. So you guys are saying um, beautiful sweater. I'm glad you guys like it. Um, it is it is a beautiful sweater. Um, I'm I'm hoping that after all these treatments are done and I can get back to my normal exercise routine and I can lose some of this weight I've lot gained over the holidays, um, that might fit me. <laughs> so, um, you know, and, and so I'm really hoping that um, at least um, I can wear it. I really love it. But I'm glad you guys like it. You, have, you would like the class on issues with sweaters. And I, you know, I do too. I mean, um, just being in Edie's class last week, um, the, the way she had us measure ourselves to figure out sweaters, this Sherwood sweater, I realized I only, I have to shorten it because I'm short waisted and it's not going to hit me where I want it to hit me. So I actually have to knit you know, several rows less than I was originally going to have to knit. So I'm going to have some leftover yarn, which is fine, but it's nice to know that I can make a sweater fit me lengthwise and I can make a sweater fit me armhole correctly. Um, you know, that kind of thing. So that class was something, um, even if you're not a, dis well, I, I guess it's more targeted toward people who are designing patterns. Um, I would love it if she would teach a class like that for people who are just customizing sweaters. Um, she's very knit centric when she talks about it. Um, there weren't that many crocheters in the class, but you can convert what she did into crochet, which is really nice. Um, Renee said, I liked making this. Oh, that's right. Renee was one of my testers. And I think, um, Stephanie, were you one of my testers too? I can't remember who my testers were on that. Um, you, I, I'll be pulling the pattern out um later this week to send you guys your copy because all my testers always get a free copy of the pattern um when it's been completely laid out right before or right after it's released so um i can't remember who tested it i know renee i had a quite a few testers so um um yes renee you can totally share on instagram in fact if you any of my testers are here for the sweater you can start sharing it now. Make sure you tag me um, at Karen Hooley so that I can share it because as I'm going to be, as I get closer to launch, I'm going to be posting more things about the sweater. So um, I would like to share with everybody your photos that you post on Instagram. I know I had you send me photos. I don't know where they went. They disappeared on my computer. I thought I had saved them all. So I would rather... Personally, I would rather have you share them and then reshare them myself. So um, if you do that, I would really appreciate it. And that's true with everything. Um, if you're working, if you want to share your elementary shawl, those of you who are in the pattern club, you want to share your elementary shawl on social media, just make sure you tag me and tag, um, use at Karen Hooley on Instagram, and then use the hashtags uh, Karen Hooley Designs and Team Hooligan. Because I follow all, of, well, I obviously follow myself, my, my own, it always gives me information, but I also follow uh, Karen Hooley Designs and Team Hooligan so I can always find what people are posting. So would really appreciate it if you use those hashtags as well. Um, okay, so again, that pattern's coming. It's um, fiber seed is what I used. It's beautiful. It's a little wrinkled right now because I just got it back from the photographer um, in late... December and I just pulled it out of the bag from the photographer. So it hasn't, but it needs to be steamed a little bit, but definitely um, be watching for that on Tuesday. And Oh, if that reminds me for those of you who are on my, my newsletter, I don't know what happened with, but my newsletter triggered on Monday instead of Tuesday. I have no idea why, because I'm showing Tuesday's date in there, but I apologize that it went out a day early. It shouldn't have. I hope you guys didn't mind, but nobody seemed to unsubscribe or get upset that I, I sent it so so early, but um, I apologize for that. 
Oh, Stephanie just popped in. I like making this water too. I'm going to give the one I made testing to my granddaughter and make another one for me. Oh, good. Definitely post on Instagram. Definitely. Um, and make another one for yourself. That'd be awesome. And, and make sure you share your progress because I, um, when anybody works with my patterns, I try to share it, reshare it to show people what my patterns look like in the wild, because you guys see on Instagram, I mean, I, I post sneak peeks, but nobody really sees the full effect until I've had it photographed. And, um, it's nice to see non-professionally modeled and photographed, you know, not done in the same yarn necessarily, or the same color, same size. You know, I, I know that my followers would love to see different sizes of, of this pattern. I mean, with shawls, it's, you know, it's not the same as with a garment where you can see it on different size bodies. So make sure you're wearing it if you can, that kind of thing. So I would appreciate it. Okay. So I talked about the sweater. Okay. So those of you who are on my newsletter, um, this last newsletter that I sent out, I had a survey. So if you haven't filled out the survey, please do. A lot of people have already filled it out. But I'm going to be contacting some people on the survey because they're asking for things that I have links to or stuff like that. But also, I don't know what it was with this particular survey. I'm just going to it right now. But I have gotten so many comments about what your number one struggle with crochet is that I've never gotten before. Um, uh, things like somebody said color work. I have it up here. On, so if I'm not, if I look kind of funny, I'm reading on the screen. Um, a ton of people said they want to learn um, Tunisian. So I'm probably going to do Tunisian class. Um, learning Tunisian in the round. Um, the right, this is one that I don't get very often. Um, you, the, using the yarn with the right characteristics for a project, using the right hook, adjusting for being a tight crocheter. Um, I, several people asked me about uh, or said their struggle is using their stash yarn and finding the right project for it. And so like this pattern that I'm working on right now is kind of on that theme is I'm using stash yarn for everything um, for next year's patterns. Um, I'm not buying yarn for, for new patterns that'll be um, in the pattern club next year. It's all stash yarn. So I'm going to be um, hopefully writing a blog post on that. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know that's something, if you're interested in that, um, that's something that'll be coming up. People are asking about gauge and somebody said, and somebody here, I think mentioned this to me too, is that they, how sloppy the top of your tall stitches look. And that's something I'm going to be doing a video on, um, in the, in the future. So, um, it, I, it won't be this month, obviously. Um, but I want to talk about that. Uh, crochet patterns turn out more chunky. So she falls back on granny square blankets and use knit for garments. Um, so that's something I want to, I want to talk about um, why crochet garments are chunky, but if you use the right yarn, so that's another little piece of all of this. Um, people, I said color work, clothing. So I'm going to be doing some more clothing. It won't be in, um, in the pattern club, for this year, this coming year or next year, but I'll be, I'll be releasing some more clothing patterns just for, and I'm going to be doing a class on my top down sweater technique. So that'll be there. Um, but then there was a couple, I'm trying to look and see here. Uh, there was a couple that was really something that I never heard before. Hold on. Modifying pattern, patterns to fit correctly. That was one of the reasons why I, I, I mentioned earlier about how to, how to, I wanted to create a class for that. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find, I've had a lot of people answer, but there's a couple. Um, Uh, and sweaters was a big one. Um, uh, seaming was a big one. Um, seaming was a big one. 
Um, uh, oh, okay. So this, this is kind of where um, I, people were, it were really interesting with things like um, working with the, the free patterns that the, that the newer, the younger crocheters are doing um, that they either Ha, are making up term names and saying they're the first person to ever do this and it's not true. Um, and the, um, they're working on a technique, but they're not making their stitches correct and stuff like that. And that's something that needs to be addressed. I don't, don't know how to address that. Um, but so many people, I have gotten so many emails from people who asked me to help them with patterns that aren't mine, that are newer, newer crocheters that are written poorly, that are made up stitch names that if you went, if she would have used the right name for it, um, somebody could find it in their stitch dictionaries and they would have been able to figure it out because the patterns are written poorly. They're not charted. They're not tech edited. Um, a lot of people put out just, I, I, I hate to use this word, but it's really garbage patterns. Um, so I'm really, um, I really need to come up with a way that I'm not going to offend a lot of people <laughs> and I might, I mean, it, I just, I would hate to see this new crop of crocheters coming up, not knowing how to do the stitches properly and how you write a pattern properly and create um, issues for those of us who've been crocheting for a long time, first of all, but then also as, as people learn new things, it's, it's, you know, I, I understand that YouTube is a great tool for people who can't afford to buy the books or the patterns. Um, YouTube and and, um, and blogs, I mean, that's been huge over the last, what, maybe 10 years or so or more. But um, more and more, even when I was working in the yarn shop, um, people would come in with crochet patterns and they would be horribly written. And I would literally have to spend time with them when I was working in the shop. That was my job was to basically rewrite the pattern for them on a piece of paper so they could understand what needed to be done. So um, let's see. Um, Laura said, I think your feedback speaks to the decline of groups, LYS family members with experience. Yes. As a bunch, we've lost a great experience. Pool. Yes, absolutely. I think not only with, well, there's a lot of designers out there that when I was coming up as a designer, quit because of the way um, some of the magazines contracts were, the book contracts were, the organ, um, the the um, large event contracts were, and they were beautiful crocheters. And they, and if they would have been continued design, excuse me, designing and teaching, I think th that they would have had followers that would have been in the smaller group of the newer newer um, crocheters. Um, I also think that in a lot of ways, and I, if anybody loves bloggers and influencers, I apologize for this, but I really think the blogger slash influencer um, era kind of ruined the way people are learning um, crochet because there's, there's bloggers out there and there's other designers out there that are younger that learn to crochet incorrectly. Um, they thought they were watching videos and, or the person who taught them only worked in the back loop. So everything's in the back loop. Um, they didn't learn that if you wrap the yarn around your hook the wrong way, it twists your stitch. Um, they didn't learn how to correctly teach a left-handed person if they're right-handed or how to correctly teach a right-handed person if they're left-handed. Uh, so I, I honestly agree with you. And then we lost some of the greats like Jean Leinhauser, um, who passed away. I'm trying to think who else we lose. Um, I don't even know if Rita Weiss is still alive. I haven't heard anything about her, her, her passing away. Um, and then a lot of the greats are getting older and not doing as much. Um, Margaret Hubert is one of my favorite crochet designers. Um, she actually, um, is still around. She's still designing. She's just, you know, it just doesn't happen as fast as it used to. I think she's in her seventies or eighties. Um, but Margaret Hubert's in another one who teaches properly. Um, there's a lot of, I don't know. I don't know. I just, 
I, I don't want to say that there's only one way to crush IPs. That's not true. Um, but I guess it's the habits, the crochet habits of teaching people properly how to hold the hook or the yarn. And there's a couple ways to hold the hook and the yarn, but the proper way to wrap your hook, the proper way to tighten your stitches, the proper way to figure out what weight yarn and what weight and what size hook work well together for your personal tension. Um, stitch patterns, using the correct names for things. Like I'm going to be doing on my, my, my newsletter series, there's a stitch out there that all the bloggers and all the influencers are calling the waffle stitch. It's not the waffle stitch. It is the potholder stitch. The waffle stitch is what I used in my pattern called, um, oh gosh, it's in my coastal crochet book. Um, ah, this is the waffle stitch. That is uh, what the, the potholder stitch is not the waffle stitch. Um, so I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be teaching the potholder stitch in my newsletter. So um, it, there's going to be, you know, it, it's just, it's really sad. It's really sad because a lot of crocheters too, and I'm going to, I'm just going to get on my soapbox for a second and then get off. But a lot of crocheters have left crocheting because of all the politics in the, in the fiber arts right now, the, the wokeness and the, the canceling of people. Um, so I know that there's a lot of designers who've left over that. Um, and a lot of designers, uh, a lot of would be designers left because they weren't getting paid what they thought they should. So, um, I think that's where Laura's right. Um, and then I think shops, and, and Laura, I know this is not you. And if Kelly's here, I'm pretty sure her shop is not this way either. But a lot of shops out there poo-poo crochet. <laughs> I've told that story a, min a million times. I won't tell it again. But we had a shop here in Washington that actually closed because she would not welcome crocheters at all. So um, those are kind of, that's kind of where I'm at with this. And that's why I want to try to do more with crochet learning wise and teaching wise and um, why I'm doing these pattern clubs and why I'm going to be setting up a membership site for people to, if you know, who really truly want to learn the right things and the do crochet the right way. And, and um, you know, I just, I, I really have, I really struggle with that. Um, Teresa says, Laura, I agree with that. My LYS lost quite a few of their experience crochet over the last, yes. And that's the thing. Experience is important. And um, a lot of these bloggers just start blogging and thinking what they're doing is right. And people see them as in influencers and say, I hate that word influencer. Um, I really think that's a problem um, because these people, especially with the younger generation, they aren't doing crochet properly. Um, and, and, and people, when they go to buy a pattern, they see like a pattern of mine that has different terminology and is written in the standard way of writing things and has charts and, and all this stuff and is tech edited and, and, you know, and has support. I should mention that too. A lot of those crocheters out there don't support what they're doing. So it's really, it's really difficult. It's really difficult for those of us who've been in the industry for a long time. Um, I don't know if you guys know Melissa Leitman. She's a, she's a, a a knitting designer, but she also does crochet design as well. Um, she's been doing these um, professional development summits. Um, so her second one starts this weekend. And it's basically, I mean, it, it's for knit and crochet and it's for designers and upcoming designers. But it's I, I the way I'm looking at what she's asking people to teach for these summits is that she's trying to get the the better patterns starting out there and the better ways of teaching and the better ways of promoting your products out there. And, um, and she's been around for a long, long time. So if you know how, um, if you've ever taken a class from Melissa, she's amazing. And, and her, I can't recommend her crochet and knitting patterns more highly than I, than, than I, she's amazing. Um, Stephanie says there's a LYS that's offering a lot of knitting classes, but none for crochet. If my 
F a full-time contract job does not renew in May. I'm going to explore teaching. You should, you should Stephanie, Stephanie, and also check into before you start, if you're thinking about teaching at all, go to the craft yarn council, um, dot com, I think, or.org. org. I can't remember and check into their certifications for teaching because, um, if, if you're really serious about teaching crochet, first of all, they teach how to teach. I'm a certified instructor and I'm a certified teacher. So I've done both levels of their, I haven't done their, their super hard one yet, but I do want to do that as well. But, um, first of all, be having that certification will teach you how to teach properly. Um, so that's really important. So if anybody here is interested in teaching, I highly recommend the craft yarn councils um, classes. You can do them on um, virtually, or you can actually go to um, to them. They they teach. You know, they'll, they'll often offer a crochet teaching classes at Gil at the events. So if there's an event near you where they're going to be offering those classes, you might want to look into those as well. <laughs> Linda says, "I love how you teach. I've been crocheting off and on." since I was nine, but I always learned. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad that I teach something new and, and, and something um, that I think that's my biggest frustration is, you know, I am, I was taught by my nonna. She taught me in Italian um, and she taught me a lot of tricks that over the years I've realized, if, you know, I have had so many how to crochet books because that's how I learned how to read patterns and how to teach myself to write patterns and how to do things that she wasn't teaching me. And over the years with all those how-to books, there was a consistency of everything. And then when you go to Craft Yarn Council and take those classes, you realize there is a consistency that you need to know when you're learning to crochet that a lot of people aren't getting. So, um, uh, so that's why you get <laughs> some of that stuff, because if anything is self-taught or family taught, there's a lot of things that that you learn through all those older books. And then uh, of course, through my craft yarn council uh, education. Um, Laura says, it always amazes me how some shops look on one craft or the other. I, I agree with you. I, I completely agree with you. Um, I don't, I don't understand why crocheters are considered the stepsister to knitting. I mean, it's like the Cinderella story where knitting is, is the evil sisters and crochet is Cinderella. I mean, and it's not, they're both good for one thing or another. I mean, my nonna always used to say that crochet does certain things well that knitting does poorly. And there are things that knitting does well that crochet does poorly. And she was talking mostly in thread work because that's basically mostly what I did with her. We did, I did do yarn. I mean, she, she always taught me certain things on yarn and she would help me with my yarn patterns and things like that. But, um, and it's true. There are some things that, that you can't do any better than what a knitter can do with, with that particular type of whatever it is. And there's certain things in crochet and it's a totally different look, but they should not be looked down. One should not look down on the other. And it really makes me crazy. That's, I could go on forever on that one. I don't know if the LYS poo poos crochet or just doesn't have anyone, but you, you should find out because that's how I ended up in my local yarn shop is I went in and looking for a pattern and also to talk to her about why she wasn't teaching classes and let her know that I was a teacher. And she, she immediately said to me that she really wanted crochet in the shop. She just couldn't find anybody. And when she saw how I taught, I mean, it was a no brainer for her to start having the crochet classes in the shop. And then I ended up working one day a week in the shop um, on top of teaching classes so that I could do be the crochet guru, you know, help with people. Everybody knew that Karen was there on Mondays or Thursday. It was Thursdays for a while and then it went, went to Mondays. Um, so um, it, it, it's a lot of shops want crochets. They just don't know who to hire or why to hire, why they need to hire. Um, oops, wait, uh, here we go. Linda says one year in shop near where I work went out of business. The owner used to make side comments about the knitting needles. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. See, there's, there's those shop owners too. Um, I think they're starting to become fewer and farther. I mean, I know here in the Pacific Northwest crochet is pretty well embraced. I mean, there's a couple shops who during the yarn tour don't have a crochet pattern, but that's mostly because they don't have a crocheter that can do a pattern for them for the, for the tour. Um, 
and they don't know how to crochet. The owners don't, but they welcome, most of them welcome you with open arms. My local shop here in this, now that I'm here in the, in the central Washington, she loves that I crochet. She bought a bunch of my books and my patterns and she promotes my stuff. So, um, and I'm hoping that once these cancer treatments are done, I can start teaching in the shop for her. Um, I just don't want to commit to that if I'm not feeling well. So Teresa says, I love Melissa. Melissa is one of my, she's my, one of my mentors in the business too, in the crochet industry. So, I mean, Melissa, I will always love Melissa. She's amazing. There are no crochet. <laughs> um, have you talked to your LYS about that? Have you, have you asked why she doesn't have any? Have you, I mean, there's, there's a, a lot of shops will hire their customers to crochet their samples. I know the gal here has hired people to crochet her samples. She crochets as well, but she's just not as fast. She's a faster knitter. So she knits all her samples and she has people who crochet her samples for her. So you might want to look into that. Um, so I mean, you will check out the Craft Yarn Council. I highly recommend their classes, even if you do them on your own. I mean, it's great. The, the, I actually did the, uh, the, I tried to do them by myself. And then I eventually was teaching at a Crochet Guild of America event where two days before the event started, the Craft Yarn Council came in and they taught that, those two classes, the, the teacher class and the instructor class. So that's how I got both certifications. I had to do a lot of homework before I got there, but... Um, but it was so much easier to know I had this deadline. I've done a lot of thread crochet patterns, <laughs> Renee, tons. Um, I just don't have them in on my on my um, on my catalog right now because uh, they're so out of date. They need to be um, they need to be revamped and done with new threads and stuff like that. But I have done tons and tons and tons. In fact. Oh, I don't have it here right now. Um, but for Valentine's Day, I will be doing a, um, yeah, it's not here. Oh, wait, maybe it's here. Yes, it is here. My thread bookmark. That's going to be on my blog um, coming up. So absolutely. Um, I've done a lot of thread. I've done a lot of filet crochet, a lot of, of that. I'm not a doily person. I mean, in, when I was first learning to becoming a designer, I always wanted to design doilies, but that's not, that's not me. That's not what I did too many of them as a kid. And it's not my favorite thing to do, but I'm willing to do thread crochet and other sorts of things. I'm not a good teacher. I have no patience. My <laughs> You know, my kids did too. Um, I come from a family of teachers, though. My mom was a teacher. Um, my son's a teacher. Um, so, I, and my mother in law is a teacher. Uh, I'm a, several of my nieces and nephews are teachers. Uh, it's just um, kind of in our blood to teach. So, it, I really think it takes, especially in crochet, I think it it's not so much patience, but it's knowing what to do and what to say and what not to do and what not to say. <laughs> We'll consider doing that. Um, good. You should definitely, any of the crocheters um, out there who have shops that don't have crochet and are interested in crocheting samples, if, you know, if a shop is, is open to that, definitely should check into and let them know that you'll, you know, and charge them a, a good hourly wage or, um, excuse me, um, an hourly wage, you know, or you could say by sample. So, you know, don't do it for free, <laughs> but like a scarf, you know, say I'll, I'll knit a scarf or crochet a scarf for, you know, 50, $7,500 or however many hours it takes in X number of dollars an hour. So that's, that's what you want to do. Laura says it's a real hoot when I find a crochet pattern book from say the forties. Oh, I have some, I have some of my grandmothers that are from the early 1900s, which is really kind of cool. I should pull those out and show you guys some one of these days. Um, Linda says, I love that. So sweet for Valentine's day. So yeah, that's going to, I have to, I have to see if my tech editor is able to, um, actually make the chart for it. I don't know if it's going to be charted or not. Um, when I release it on Valentine's day, it's just going to be a free pattern on the blog. So it may not have a chart, but, um, it's, it's a fun, 
I love thread crochet too. I just don't like doilies and runners and bedspreads and stuff like that. I'm more of, you know, the simpler projects, um, fillet crochet a little bit. Um, someday I would love to do a, a, a thread bedspread or a tablecloth just because I want to say I've been, was able to do it because that's what my grandmother used to do. She did altar cloths and runners and doilies. I learned a lot of doilies um, and I have a lot of patterns for doilies. So, um, and I like fillet, fillet crochet. In fact, I used to have software that doesn't work on my computer anymore for fillet crochet. And I used to teach a class on fillet crochet. So I, that's something I might bring back. You never know. My grandmother did a fillet crochet at the last supper. Oh yes, some of those are beautiful. Yes. And those patterns are so far hard. The, the, the really good ones are so hard to find these days too but I would definitely want to make a new one too. Um, I'd love to have that pattern. <laughs> that, yeah, uh, you know, honestly, if you can find that pattern, the right pattern. And pillow, and I like pillowcase edgings. I don't mind doing edgings and thread. Um, I just, I don't do them that often. I don't design them. And what's cool about thread, and especially now with all of the thread books out there, um, if you go to Leisure Arts, they have a ton of edging books that you could do with thread. Um, one of my first mentor mentors is Terry Kimbrough, who did tons of books for Leisure Arts. And she has tons of thread books. And, you know, she does it so well that I don't need to do it. Um, so definitely. Oh, my goodness. She did it from a picture. That's amazing. Is it something that you have access to um, that, um, that last supper? The, that last supper, if you have access to it, you might be able to reverse engineer it and crochet it based on what she did, you know, figure out how many, how many blocks you need. And then, you know, just copy the picture, copy what she did. She couldn't read patterns or charts. That's, that's amazing. I've thread crochet tablecloth that my aunt Josie made. <laughs> And small. Yep. I have, I have my grandmother's, I, I have my grandmother's uh, bedspread that she made when she was on the boat coming from Italy. I have my grand, her husband, my grandfather's sister's bedspread that she made for my grandparents when they were getting married. I have a box of thread, everything. I mean, mostly pot holders, but lots of table toppers and doilies and stuff from my dad's aunt who passed away just, I don't know. She was, he was young when she passed away. She was, she was, a uh, she was married to his uncle and her, his uncle died and she, she never had kids. And so my dad and my, my dad's sister were like her kids. So she made all these things and I have all that. And I keep saying I want to frame some of them. I've shown you in the past, but I might pull them out again and, and show because some of you weren't around when I was showing those things. Um, it's in your living room. You should try to chart it. Um, I don't see, you know, do it a piece at a time and just, but six by two, that's a big piece. Did she, do you know if she did it in size 10 or 20? Because I did a um, my son's um, uh, baptismal, or not baptismal, his uh, first communion uh, banner that they had to have in the church when he received his first communion was 24 by 24 by 36. I had to think about it. And it's all done in filet crochet. Um, he didn't want felt like everybody else. I had to do it in filet crochet. So um, it's got a like a sheep and the cross and his name and all that. So <laughs> I should I should actually, I should have the chart somewhere. I don't know when, I mean, that was so long ago. He was in second grade when that happened. So it says JP Coates, big ball, best six cord, mercerized cotton, size 30. So, okay. Steel hook 10 or 11. So it's tiny. That's a tiny piece. I mean, that's tiny thread. Um, Tyler's I did with um, size 20 so I could get the picture to pop. If I used 10, it wouldn't have popped. So I had to use small hook. And Teresa says, um, either 20 or 30. Yeah. The small, the larger the number, the smaller the thread. So yeah. 
Now, maybe if you want it the same size as hers, you may want to um, play with it, play with all of the thread and, and, you know, do small corner of it or something and see if you can get it to match the size. But I would definitely try to chart it. That'd be so cool. Oh my goodness, guys, it's 10.09 my time. So I'm over time this today. Um, but we had a really good conversation about stuff. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and jump over to do my closing remarks. And then um, I'll come back if you guys have anything else you want to ask or say, I've still got a little bit of time. I can be here. So today is a good day to chat. So um, for those of you who are watching for the first time, thank you for for watching all the way through. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to visit my website at karenholy.com. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe to my newsletter. This is the link to the direct um, subscribe page. Um, and make sure you, you subscribe so you can get that 25% off the, the sweater that you see behind me um, next week. I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> um, if you're not watching on YouTube, check out my YouTube channel. I go live every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Um, this is the link that you can use to get to my my web, or to my YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the thumbs up and the subscribe. The subscribe will let you know when I go live. And the thumbs up will help with the algorithms. Well, actually, both will help with the al algorithm that more crocheters will see my live stream. So make sure you do that. If you're not watching on YouTube, um, you might be watching on Rumble. But if you're not watching on Rumble, check out my Rumble channel. It's a link here below. I automatically upload these videos as soon as I am done with the chat. So um, make sure you check that out. And also make sure you follow me at Karen Hooley on Instagram. Um, I'm most active there. I'm pretty much, I try to get on there every day. It doesn't always happen, but I try. So I'm going to head back to the chat room here really quick and see what you guys are saying. Oh, God bless you. Thank you. Um, it's been, it's been really cold and really dry here. I have my, um, I have a diffuser on with essential oils that have been helping with my sinuses. Um, I, I'm over the head cold, but the dryness still kind of just ugh, does everything. I think that's what was wrong with my throat too earlier. But anyway, guys, and if you have any more questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to sign off here. Take a sip of my coffee. I'm glad you enjoyed today's chat, Renee. It's, you know, it, it, it's really, oh, and I here you go with my again with my voice. It's really good for me, too, because it's been, it's been a, um, a hard week for me until yesterday morning. <laughs> I mean, just with the stress. So these, these chats always help me, but I'll be back next week um, for sure. And for those of you who are in my crochet along, I'll see you on Monday evening um, or afternoon, depending on where, what time zone you're in. And um, otherwise I'm going to sign off. I'll see you next week. Oh, what essential oil do you use for breathing easier? I use a company called Rocky Mountain Oils. And I have several. <laughs> um, let me pull my little box out and then I can show you what I have. <clears throat> um, but today I'm using Deep Breathe. Um, this is this has got a mixture of stuff in it: rosemary, pine, lime, and ravensara. It just helps me breathe better. Um, when I'm not feeling well, I have a couple. I have Breathe Ease, but this is their old label. It's I, have, I don't use this one as much. This one's got like eucalyptus and myrtle and peppermint and all sorts of stuff in it. This one's great when I'm sick. And then I also use the Immune Strength, um, which is if you follow Young Living, it's like they're thieves. It's the same mix. It's just they call it Immune Strength. Um, and this is great because when I feel like I'm getting sick, I put this in my diffuser and I, um, I tend to at least ward off the, the biggest part of it. Um, there's something to be said about a mixture of essential oils that, I, I mean, I'm not a big touter of all this stuff, but the immune strength has helped me so many times with my asthma and my, you know, my, my reactive sinuses not get as sick as I usually do. So 
I recommend that. And then I have, you know, I use peppermint and I use eucalyptus and lavender, lemon, and I have like clarity and at peace. I you I love their oils. Their oils are great and they last forever. It's like you saw, I have their old labels and their new labels. So they work. Um, I like them. Anyway, um, for the crochet along is Bruno. I don't know that yarn. If it's if it's not super wash, it should be okay. It has to be a, a non super wash yarn. So I don't know what that yarn is. I haven't seen that yarn. Lannis. What's the fiber content? Oh, 100 percent wool, but it's a thin, bulky yarn. Oh, if it's 100 percent wool, it's not super wash. <clears throat> um, it should work. It should work just fine as long as it's not super wash. That's the key. Um, I don't know. I've never felt it, so I don't know what it's gonna what it's gonna do. Every yarn brand felts a little differently that I can tell you, um, and it's just in how it's spun, and it also is how um, how well they have kept the natural qualities of the wool. If that makes sense, I mean, if they didn't treat it with anything that's not gonna that's gonna affect how it shrinks down. If that makes sense. Um, so that's, that's good to go. Okay, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to sign off now. <laughs> Thanks for asking questions though. I appreciate it. I will see you next week. Um, you know where to find me if you need me, but otherwise I will see you next Wednesday. Talk to you soon. Bye y'all.